Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Tuesday, June 27th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And please remember everyone that we go live on Facebook Monday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. on the West Coast, 10 p.m. on the East Coast. And of course, if you'd like to help support us financially, please go to patreon.com slash daily internet, because that is what we'd like to achieve one day soon. And 7 p.m. on the West Coast. Holy shit, is to uh, bring you... A daily dose of the internet. That's yeah. That's our whole tagline. But we need to accomplish it eventually. And we need to work our way up to the daily dose. We just set high goals for ourselves by giving that our tagline. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Whatever. Right now we're a four day a week daily dose. Giving you your almost daily dose of the internet. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't want to OD, right? Giving you your half daily dose. Got to, you, you got to work up to it, and you got to build a tolerance so that you can actually half do it every day. Dose. Yeah, no, yeah, it's 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 building tolerance, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you don't die, like cobra venom. Yeah. Does, can you do that? Does that work? Yes. Uh, you can, kind of. It'll make you incredibly sick the entire time you do it, and you have to do it over months. And you don't become fully immune to Cobra Venom, you just gain a, a good resistance to it. Uh, that being said, I also own a movie where there's a mad scientist who wanted to turn a man into a King Cobra. Okay. That shit was awesome. Was it awesome? Yeah. How awesome Everyone, if you get Everyone, if you get a chance to watch it, it's called... It's nine S's in a row. It's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is. 1973. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Weird. All right. How you it, been, it's, though? It's like an early tusk, really. Sure. Um, I'm fucking incredibly tired. Yeah? Woke up this morning, hung over again. Um, yeah, no, that was about it. Made my day hell. I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you drinking now, or do you decide no? I'm going to be drinking after the podcast. Okay, good plan. Be because I don't have Chaser at the moment. Sure. So I want to go buy Chaser. Right now, I'm just drinking out of this. So, uh, you should mention the thing that you mentioned about Baldur's Gate right now, before... Oh! Be because I actually needed to respond to that, but I was trying to get things set up, and we could just talk about it real quick right now. Yeah, let me go back to it. Uh, so today I learned that the classic PC game Baldur's Gate was developed alongside its engine in 18 months by a team of 60 people who had never worked on a video game before, submitted by Cardassian Nectric to R Today Learned. Yeah, and the reason that I found it entertaining that you made that comment was because for the very first time ever, I started playing the first Baldur's Gate yesterday. That shit's amazing. I, you know, it took me off guard at first because I actually had no idea what Baldur's... I, I had heard of it, right? It's like it's, it's, this, it's this historical classic, you know, famous RPG, and I was like, I've never played it. And it's six bucks. Second for, edition, right? Yeah, it's straight up just D&D second edition in the game. And it gives you also a lot of dialogue options, which I enjoyed as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll be trying to work my way through that. I will say as at, like, first startup, I don't feel like it's aged extremely well. I'm sure it was amazing when it came out. You know, I'm starting to feel that way about Dungeon Siege after I purchased Dungeon Siege 1, 2, 3, and 3's DLC for $4 from the Steam sale. Sure. Uh, I started playing Dungeon Siege 1 again, and I remember liking it a lot more when I was a kid. That being said, like, now I'm kind of spoiled. I really like Path of Exile and Grim Dawn and all of these better top-downs. I mean, yeah. shit, I, played, I probably played Diablo 2 way more than Dungeon Siege. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, just initially, like, I it's the enhanced edition, so I assume that means that they've tried to clean some things up, but it just doesn't feel like it plays as smooth as it probably should. Like, it just feels a bit clunky. But like I said, you know, 25 years ago when it came out, or however long it was, I'm sure it Fucking was... Fucking great. I'm sure it was one of the best games that was ever made at the time. Did, well, did you know that Dungeon Siege has a movie? Really? I, I think it's got three. Right. They're called In the Name of the King, a Dungeon Siege movie. The first one starred Matthew Lillard as the uh, antagonist, and the protagonist was Jason Statham. So you're like, this is going to be a great film, right? Mm hmm Directed by Uwe Boll. Yeah, but it's you, Boll. Yeah. He's terrible. So like, so, like, you purchase the DVD, right, and you open it up, and there's a steaming pile of dog shit. 
So you're like, oh man, that's not a DVD. That's a steaming pile of dog shit. So you go to return it and you go to the counter and you're like, hey, so I bought this movie and I opened it up and it's a steaming pile of dog shit. Can I return it? And the guy goes, oh, no, no, no. See, that is the movie. Sorry. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah. Unfortunate. But that's why you shouldn't let you bull make movies. Yeah, uh, actually, they he he was in the bid for the World of Warcraft movie, and Blizzard was like, "No, you make garbage. And we're not gonna do that." We like... got super angry and made a YouTube video, basically quitting Hollywood and calling everyone dickheads. You know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Like, like Blizzard was just like, "We don't want garbage. We want polished garbage." So we're gonna go with Universal. And you, you know what? Their movie wasn't awful. <laughs> sure. It wasn't awful. I feel like that's such a bad way to describe things when they're just bad. It's not. It wasn't a bad movie. It was a good movie. It was really disjointed if you don't know much about the World War, uh, Warcraft universe. Yeah, I feel like they should have. Like, here's the biggest downfall of that movie. I feel like they should have either chosen to go full CG or not as much CG as they did. Everyone was. Everyone in the film was CG except for the humans, and that fucked me up. I was like, "What the hell is going on?" Why is Ragnar Lothbrok not CG compared to all of these dwarves and shit? It looked really weird. It just, like, it, it really disconnected the movie. Either right, way. Right, but I, I had to love it because, you know, Travis Fimmel. Sure. Two million free Eclipse glasses are coming to U.S. libraries. Oh, uh, sorry, I was looking at Uwe Bowl. How dare uh, you? This was, dir uh, not directed, submitted by Blank Verse to Our Space. So, the, we are about to have a solar eclipse happening. I believe it is occurring in August. I'll get the exact date for you in just a moment. Now, it's not going... Depending on where you live, it might only be a partial eclipse. But on August 21st, between right around like South Carolina to Oregon, um, there is going to be... So, just a thin line across the, the central section of the United States, there's going to be a portion where there is a total eclipse. Which means that the move, moon moves directly in front of the sun, and then it makes this cool thing because... The sun shines around the moon. Um, and normally you can't look at it. You, I mean, you can, but it's not recommended. You're still looking at the sun. Don't do that. It's bad for your eyes. And But the Space Science Institute, the SSI, has put forth this movement of which they're going to be sending 2 million glasses, which are heavily darkened, so that they're like, they're like super dark sunglasses, so that people around America can look at the eclipse and so in any of these libraries and it doesn't list them and i'm sure but it, it's there's 4,800 libraries involved so i mean call your local library and see if they're there also i'd advise looking up the path of the eclipse and they might be willing to just be like here because they're going to be free and then there's also going to be info little info packs about the eclipse so that you can read up on it and look at the eclipse and then you know move on and wait for what is it like 18 years or whatever until the next one happens Mm -hmm. I, I think this is really it reminds me of that episode of the Simpsons <laughs> the Simpsons episode for everything uh, where they made a box where you can watch the eclipse in it I think it was the Simpsons I, um, I normally know people that'll like either try and like put on multiple pairs of sunglasses or um, they recommend like a welder's helmets if you have access to one of those um, and then I feel like if I was still working at the Boys and Girls Club, I would totally make something so that we'd all be able to see the eclipse. I feel like if you have a kid, especially a young, impressionable kid, you should probably do this so that they can see the eclipse. Because this is an incredible thing. Yeah, it's super cool. It, it, it makes It's one of those things that happens in the world that gives you a small sense of how small you are. A small sense? Man, daily, I'm like, holy fuck, I am tiny and insignificant. Aww. But, but... You're not that insignificant. I mean, look at the people you live with. They're pretty insignificant. Everyone's insignificant in the grand scheme of things. That's fair. Mm. Eventually, our planet will die, and we'll all die, and that'll be okay. Everything will return back to normal. I suppose, maybe, eventually. Oh, fuck. What was the name? Oh, hold on. I'm going to get that, that speech. Uh, 28 days later, return to normal. In the 28 Days Later movie, there is a, there's a bit, uh, one of the, one of the people, the fucking military people were talking about, um, uh, how long people have been on the earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I'm gonna find that bit here. Are you? Yeah, because it's really, it's really just it. It blows my mind, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so here it is. Okay. Um, this is what I've seen in the four weeks since infection: people killing people which is much what I saw in the four weeks before infection and the four weeks before that and before that, as far back as I care to remember. People killing people, which... Oh, never mind. That's not it. I saw normality, and I thought it was that. Well, I mean, that, that that's that's very true as well. I mean, we don't necessarily need vampirism or anything like that for yeah. as, as an excuse to kill each other. Here it is. <clears throat> Sergeant Farnell. Well, I think Bell's got a point. When you look at the whole life of the planet, we, you know, man, has only been around for a few blinks of an eye. So if the infection wipes us all out, that is a return a return to normality. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I I think really like the the thing for man is that we don't destroy each other and we figure out a way to get off of this rock. We have to stop being so toxic. So the first step is to uninstall League of Legends from every computer that it ever was downloaded on. Uh, stay away from my computer, sir. It's step one, Michael. Yeah, I don't I don't care for that step, sir. Fight me. Don't you want to be in space, Michael? Fight me, bitch. Fuck. Yeah, that's right. Get wrecked, nerd. That game's so goddamn bad. The, it is not as toxic as uh, as some other communities. It's toxic. I'm not saying it's not as toxic as some other communities. It's very famous for being toxic and it's awful. Like Hearthstone's pretty toxic. Uh, well, that's because you're not allowed to talk to anybody during your match. I have to sneeze. Ah, oh, Jesus, that's annoying. Dota's really toxic. Like right. Dota's worse than League by a long shot. So let's shot. just get rid of all of the MOBAs. Just get rid of online multiplayer games. That'll solve the problem. Specifically MOBAs. And, I guess, Hearthstone. Heroes of the Storm. Let's just delete and re- and re Actually, out of one. all of the MOBA communities, Heroes of the Storm was the most welcoming to me. Oh, no, it's true. It's just because it's a terrible game. I mean... It's, it's just incredibly casual. Like, it's just a bad game, so... Mm -hmm. Anywho... Nine. Google has been fined 2.4 billion euros, which would turn into 2.7 billion dollars, by the European Commission after it ruled the company had abused its power. This was submitted by fucking number uh, one million chf to our world news. So this is an interesting thing. So this is a case that's been going on for seven years in which it's about Google and how their ad programs work, specifically the shopping ones. Because if you search up an item, you know, if you search up like comic books or you search up like cuddly toys or you search up, you know, uh, a TV show or something, at the top of your search results will be sponsored ads of thing of, of hopefully what you're looking for and trying to get you to buy them. And the e the EU Commission on this, the European Commission, basically said that your ads remove the ability for competition and innovation. Because I can I can understand that because your search results and your paid ads define what people see, and. Google and so if people pay more money, they get seen first, which means that their ads are that they have a better chance of selling things than the smaller guy, right? Mm -hmm. And compared to the ads that are posted at the top, competitors of those would be as many as three or four pages deep in the search results before they started to appear. And Google said that's not a bad thing in our opinion, like. If you like it, it, it that it, it's how the market works. That's advertising. You got to spend money to make money. Like we only the it, it it's not picking and choosing who we like better. It's purely who paid for the space. And when you pay for the space, you pay for an amount of time that you are seen. It's called CPM or clicks per thousand, and it is the estimated number of times that you will clicked per thousand impressions. So what that means is like, for instance, like when we purchase ads on Facebook or something like that, it'll say, okay, I would like to purchase 25,000 impressions, which means that my, our group will be put in front of 25,000 people. And if they click on it, then that is considered one CPM, which means one click per thousand. And so estimated most ads are only between like 3 to 10 CPM means that out of a thousand people that see it, maybe 3 to 10 of them will click on it. And that is how advertising rates are conducted on how good the CPM is. And so Google has 
a bajillion CPM that they can offer, especially when it's just pure impressions. And so that's what people pay for with Google. But because Google is so big, the EU has been really cracking down on them for the basis of that you are now no longer just a choice. 90% of the world or some ridiculous number along those lines uses you as their search program, their search engine, which means that you have such a large control over this that it is not merely a matter of your own personal business anymore because you have a global and a substantial effect on both large and small economies. Okay, yeah. I can understand where the European Union is coming from. So now here's the problem, though, is that they find them 2.4 billion euros, which is not as much as they could find them. They could find them 10% of their parent company's total revenue over the last like seven years, which would be right around wow. 90 billion. Now, Jesus. in terms of the money, it's not a big deal for Google. Google has currently sitting in its bank accounts, like money that it has, not having to liquidate or sell off anything, money it has, has somewhere around 80 to $100 billion just sitting there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's not the fine that's the problem. It's the precedent of what that means moving forward for Google, especially because in addition to this order of the fine, they said you have 60 days to fix this, to be fair to both the large and the small firms. How you fix it is up to you. You just have to show us that you fixed it within 60 days. They gave him a fix-it ticket. Right. But unlike with a fix-it ticket for your car, which in which it's like you need to take this to a mechanic and have them replace this part, Google now has to come up with how they're going to fix it in two months. Like Stop the doing ads like that? Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because the EC is the one who made this point. And they're the ones that are forcing it upon, but they're not willing to present any actual solution for it. Just saying, find a solution or you're going to owe us more money. So maybe for European courts or for European servers and everything, they just take out ads. Well, no, because, I mean, Google, that, that that's how Google makes money is ads. They're the largest. Right, I know, but like just for the European countries. That's millions, if not billions of dollars. I, I understand but they are also millions upon billions of dollars just wealthy. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they need to f change that just because they are. Uh, sure. Then they fix it somehow so that uh, they, they do the Blizzard thing where China was like, hey, you need to give the, the possibilities of your loot boxes because it's like gambling, and so they changed the way you can buy loot boxes so they didn't have to do that. Oh, is that the case? Yeah. That's how they fixed it. They were like, okay, so instead of using real money to purchase loot boxes, you use real money to purchase in-game currency. Then you use that in-game currency. Uh, no, no, you, you purchase, you use real money to purchase in-game currency, right? Yeah. When you do that, they give you an uh, X amount of loot boxes equal to the amount of, of loot boxes you would have got if you purchased it. But then you also get in-game currency to build characters with. Or not your characters, you to buy skins and stuff with. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I understand, but Jesus Christ. That's so now you can't actually purchase loot boxes. But you do. Right. That's that way they can get around having to give China their, their coding so that they can tell what the possibility is for legendaries. Which, I'll fucking tell you, the possibilities for legendaries is not, ex non-existent. You get, a, you get a legendary at the beginning of every event, usually within the first five boxes. And then after that, you have to play amazingly large amounts of games. You have to play ass loads of games. I don't feel like it's that bad. I've probably opened like a hundred um, Overwatch boxes, and I've probably gotten at, at least ten legendaries. Then you're luckier than a lot, because like, I don't have nearly that amount. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't feel like it, the numbers are that and bad. And actually, a lot of a lot of my um a lot of my my uh, legendary skins, I actually had to go out and purchase on my own. I purchased three of them just the other day. Like maybe it's like one in fifteen, one in twenty. Which I mean, I don't I feel, feel like it's more than that. I don't think so. I mean, maybe maybe I don't know. Don't have the numbers, so. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna sit there and buy a case of loot boxes and sit there and open them, and keep track of all of these things. Yeah, who would do that? China. Yeah, anyway. 
Um, so either way right now, Google is not certain what course of action is going to take. They respectfully get, disagree with the, the result of the case at this time, because I mean, two and a half billion euros is a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Especially because but at the same time, it's not that much for them. Right. But it, they weren't necessarily doing anything nefarious though. Like, if they were intentionally trying to screw, like, the small guy or something, sure. But there's the way that they had been conducting business meant that the people that paid for ads had a better chance of getting their stuff sold, which makes sense. So, I mean, I don't necessarily feel like Google is at fault, but I understand why it's an issue. Yeah, no, I can, I can completely understand. It's just unfortunate for them, I guess. I guess. And, like, honestly, like, when you look at a lot of the the ads that are presented for shopping, like, normally Amazon's always up there, no surprise, but then there's a lot of people that I have no idea who the hell they are. Like, I've never heard of these companies, so, I mean, I don't feel like it could be doing that bad for the smaller guy. Andrew in the comments said the alternative is to make individuals pay for Google, but if you have to pay for Google, it automatically just murders Google straight out the bat. Well, and I don't feel like that would necessarily work anyway anymore because like, look, Google has gotten so big that it now can't operate under normal pretenses. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it's just not an option. It's kind of like how Microsoft has to be careful with how it operates Windows because like 95% of all computers run Windows. And so you can't be making power moves because it affects everyone almost. So... Yeah. No, it it's it's weird. Like once you've become that large, it's like Facebook and I having... mean shit, you have a fucking a, a turn of phrase after your company, Google it. Yeah, I and people say that and Do you know who first invented that phrase? Who? Joss Whedon. Really? Mm -hmm. I think it was in a Buffy episode. Interesting. Either way, we'll see. It's going to keep on rotating and flowing around, but uh, I'm sure we'll hear, hear more from it later. Uh, why didn't that work? I hate it when it doesn't actually copy and paste. I'm going to actually make sure that it was Joss Whedon. Yay, there we go. Eight. Brooklyn's latest craze, making your own electric grid. Uh, this was submitted by... Uh, fucking A. Mavia, it's our futurology. Yep, so we've talked in the past about Bitcoin, right? We've talked about cryptocurrencies and what a blockchain is. And they are looking to do that with power. So right now, the way it works is that if you have solar panels on your roof and you generate more power than your house uses, you that energy is put into your local power grid and then your power company will pay you for that power that you generate. So instead, though, this local company in Brooklyn is looking instead to have people sell power to each other to create their own local power grid that's made out of people that are generating electricity or want to be on part of that small grid that generates electricity through renewable resources. And the way that they operate is instead of a middleman, they are operating on a blockchain, which what that means is that there is no there is no power company there is no middleman there is no operating force that keeps track of everything for you everyone keeps track of everything and they cross check each other's numbers to make sure everything is correct so here's the way that that works i'll try to summarize as quickly and as easily as i can we you have a ledger that says that for for instance we're just going to say potatoes uh, potatoes is the currency and the currency is dollars okay and you have a ledger that says i have eight potatoes and potatoes and i will sell those potatoes for one dollar okay you put that in your ledger and then what that does is on everyone's ledger around everyone looks at your ledger and says okay i can see that he has eight potatoes and he wants to sell them for one dollar each so now you have 50 people that have a ledger that says I have that he has eight potatoes selling them for $1 each. Now, if you sell four potatoes to someone else, everyone's ledger all at the same time says he has four potatoes. He gave four potatoes to that guy. That guy gave him $4. So instead of having one person watching the books, everyone watches the books. And that means that there's no way to cheat the books either. Because if you try to cheat your book and go, oh, look, blah, 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 blah. I actually had 20 potatoes. And everyone, everyone else's book goes, no, you have eight. 
and that's how that works. So right, it's like Bitcoin. No, yeah, and that's exactly what I was explaining was how Bitcoin works. Oh, okay. Works. I'm sorry. I, I I missed the first bit of that because my headphones cut out. Oh, okay. Yeah, it works just like Bitcoin. It's called a blockchain, and instead of Bitcoin, which is a cryptocurrency or anything else, they would be using power, and their power grid would say, "Hey, I have this much power. Put that into your ledger. Everyone can go boop. Yeah, I can verify that he has that much, and then everyone sees. Oh, yeah, blah 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 blah, and then you trade power around and can turn that into currency because you just buy it if you need it i mean shit eventually i like it power is so important that i can understand just our currency being run off of power instead of gold uh sarah you know? in the chat room asks, what if one person who wants to charge you outrageous prices for power so you can like you could go on to the ledger and say i want to sell my power for 50 dollars," and then everyone else's ledger goes yeah but power's worth a dollar so your power would just it just wouldn't be bought it would yeah be, it would just sit there yeah i mean you if you want your power to ever be exchanged or your potatoes or your bitcoin you have to stay at the running market rate or at least very close to it if you i mean it kind of works like the stock market in a sense of that if you want to sell it you can sell it at the market price which is whatever has been set by the universal around and that price fluctuates based on supply and demand always following demand and demand they don't stay the same so if supply goes up demand goes down because there's more of it available if demand goes up supply goes down which means people are willing to pay more for it yeah it's like ebay it, it it's at it, that's how economy works the only difference is instead of someone like the like the new york stock exchange monitoring the price or your local power company monitoring the price or your you know internet service providers setting the price or ebay you know having the being the the man who takes one object from one person one a dollar from another person and you, trades them you just trade how do you it directly. sell it do you just do you just buy a battery fill it up and then sell the battery you would connect your house to this grid Oh. It would be it'd be like literally having small little power lines that connect my house to your house to their house to their house and we go woo. Sure, that's fucking dope. Yep. I mean it, it's this one in, it takes a bit more infrastructure to set up, but mm -hmm. it does remove the middleman to where people just buy and sell power to one another. I can't wait for Alaska to get on that train and start forgoing our pipeline for um for hydroelectric and and wind energy because we have a lot of that shit um andrew in the chat room asks if there isn't enough being produced can you still buy from companies yes so i mean technically if there, there might be some sort of fee to have your house connected to the to not the internet to the power so i mean they might have a in 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 an initial like five dollar a month fee to keep your power on but if you don't use any power i mean your bill will be like you know, 17 cents essentially, or something along those lines, whatever it costs to keep the power connected to your house, which I'm sure there's some fee that's associated with that. And then I, I imagine that like your power meter has a little bit of a draw. There's, there's going to be a little bit no matter what, but if you have something that generates that, then I mean, you could keep it still connected to the main power grid of the city without actually causing any problems. You just have to pay the small connection fee to keep it open. I mean, and, I mean, and if you're paying bare minimum because you're producing enough of your energy, like, fuck, why, why not right. keep that open just in case? It's like a generator, you know? Yeah. Well, and I mean, presumably, if you're generating more than more power than you need, you're going to be selling it off to the, uh, you know, in this case, the the local energy grid through the Unlimited blockchain. Unlimited power. I am also not certain how much how the exchange works if you generate enough power that you can sell it to the the company's grid the big one that we're all currently on i'm not sure if they straight up pay you or if they just you know remove the amount from your bill or how that works watch them go like oh hey we're totally confiscating this from you guys because it's power that you're not supposed to have andrew goes on to say so it's only viable as long as your savings outdo the cost of being connected to the main well i feel that's kind of true for personal renewable energy anyway especially with the cost associated with like trying to set up solar panels on your roof like they are really expensive expect to pay like 20 grand or more to set up the panels on your roof for now Right, for now. I mean, with Tesla solar shingles coming out, the solar little the, the little plates that they just make a roof out of them, it's, it's going to be a bit different moving forward. But 
I feel like unless you have the money to spare that you just want to be a little bit more efficient in your life, you have to spend enough to where it can start paying itself back off. Because if my pow if my electric bill is fifty is a hundred dollars and I spend ten thousand dollars on solar cells and it only makes my bill fifty dollars. Um, okay, that was really weird. For some reason, yeah, I, I got a, I just got a message from uh, Andrew saying, "Hey, your uh, stream's broken." I don't know why. That's yeah. that that's really weird and really dumb. Mm -hmm. But uh, it should be fixed now. It's not going. To, it's not going to work on that same link, but it should work on the new one. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, Google. The first term of Google, or first time Google was used as a verb was in um, 1998 by Google co-founder Larry Page, who wrote on a mailing list, have fun and keep Googling. Its earliest known use on American television was in the Help episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, October 15, 2002, when Willow asked Buffy, have you Googled her yet? Oh, interesting. All right. Which Buffy the Vampire Slayer was written by... I don't know. Joss Whedon. Oh, okay. Who also did... I don't know. The Avengers movies. Oh, okay. As well as Cabin in the Woods, but you know, sure. whatever. And I guess Firefly and Serenity too, and Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog. Okay. Well, I know the, I know those last ones. I've only seen Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog though. That's really unfortunate, dog. Well, like I... Firefly and Serenity are probably one of the best like science fiction things that I've watched, and they're only it's only two seasons. Well, we should keep moving. We're at thirty five minutes and are only on topic number seven. Oh yeah. yeah. So. Uh... Yeah, about that. Seven. Director Neil, Neil Marshall says his Hellboy reboot will be bloody R-rated and light on CGI. All right, so we can just end the episode here because this was my fucking thing of the day. I'm not sorry. This is submitted by Bun Yip Pouch to our movies. I'm not looking forward to fix it, to smushing those videos together in post. I hate doing that. Either way. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right, either way. So Director Neil Marshall has said that they have gotten the, the clear to go, the green light on making Hellboy R-rated, which means that he is going to make the movie that he wanted to make, essentially. And so we're going to get a hard R Hellboy that is feature, going to feature lots of violence and lots of blood. You can look forward to Hellboy Rise of the Blood Queen sometime next year year comic book movies and ratings have always been interesting to me because they tried r-rated uh comic book movies way before people thought they tried it in blade and like there was three blade movies and the first and second one were really good and the third blade movie wasn't half bad but that was because it was mostly ryan reynolds now <clears throat> they stopped doing that for some fucking reason because they're like ah oh, we don't need that shit anymore we're gonna do pg-13 so that everyone can watch it or pg so that even the children can watch it and gain money right i, I well, think it's mostly because of marvel's success like, right and I, I think that's purely the reason why is because of how successful marvel was so everyone but was there's... just trying to do what marvel did to make the money that marvel did because but like... there's like so many good marvel stories that are r-rated Right. Like, for instance, do you know why the Civil War actually kicked off in the Marvel Universe in the comic books? Yes. Okay, I'm glad. Thank you. But see, like, the Blade movies... The guy killed a bunch of children. The Blade movies, each of them only made, like, $115 million in the box office, which, compared to, like, the $500 million plus that most of the superhero movies that from Marvel have been bringing in... Inflation. That's... What? Inflation. I, inflation. Okay. Also, all right. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I, I'm just gonna say this, right? Everyone and their fucking mothers knows who Iron Man is. Mm -hmm. Knows who the Hulk is. Yeah. Nobody and their fucking mothers knows that Blade is part of the Marvel universe, unless you've watched the animated Spider-Man series from 1990. You are correct, and that is part of it. Also, I mean, also inflation, that, that's not true. I mean, the Blade movies are only like 10 to 15 years old, depending right, on... Right, I, I know. Like, the inflation might move them from 115 to like 130. <laughs> like, I, still haven't, I still haven't watched House of Cthon. So, either way, though, I mean, it, at least, regardless of what it meant before, it's, I am glad that we are getting them now. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super stoked, especially for the Hellboy movie, because... I fucking absolutely love the Hellboy movies. I also feel like, like the they're first just... two, first two are great. I also just feel like they're better at making superhero movies now. I feel like they better understand the format. 
I I don't know if hmm, I guess he's kind of a superhero. Hellboy's an interesting category. I feel. You know what I mean, though. Yeah. No. No. I, comic book movies. Yeah, but I mean, it's called the superhero genre. Right. So. Um, I guess Hellboy is definitely a superhero, actually. Um, but the the first Hellboy movie was absolutely fucking amazing. I the have second not seen Hellboy it. movie was all right. Haven't seen it either. The the first one was was one of the best comic book films I have ever watched. Haven't seen it. It's it's I fucking love it. Abe Sapien is a great character, and he's probably my favorite character in that entire like comic book universe. Sure. Um, but you know it's it's really really good. Six. Flight delayed after woman throws coins into engine for luck. This is my second son of a bitch! <laughs> Submitted by Pipster33 to R What the Fuck. Yep, so this occurred in China. Um, an elderly woman who is believed to be exceeding the age of 80 or somewhere in that general area was seen as she boarded the plane because... In Shucking. Tr to coins. Underhanding tossing coins into the, the fucking plane's engine. There's like nine of them, I think. Only one of them made it. All no, of it together was like 1.76 yuan or something? No, no. She chunked a lot of coins and only oh. eight of them made it. Oh, okay. Or eight, eight or nine or something in that general area. Um, but it delayed the plane for five hours because they had to open up the engine to get inside to take the coins out. Because if those coins went into the wrong area of the engine, it could be a catastrophic failure, which could lead to the plane crashing or just straight up exploding. We really don't need another plane explosion. Don't throw anything into a plane's engine. Mm. Haven't you guys watched any fucking Hollywood film in general where they have a plane explosion? It's always because It's usually because of the engine. It, yeah, it's because something flew into the engine. Whether it be a bird, a superhero cape... A person... Uh, a gremlin. Yeah, no, it fucks it up, you know? Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Five. Trump no hopes... Trump hotel owner in Toronto reaches deal to remove Trump brand. This was submitted by Brit Boy 1998 to Our World News. So this massive Marriott hotel suite uh, suites in Toronto, big beautiful building, but it it it's, it was originally created under Trump, and even when it was bought out by JFC Capital ULC, um, which is who owns it, is they um they they, they they be part of the purchase was that they had to keep Trump's brand on it, and Trump's brand is not not something you necessarily always want to be associated with anymore, especially nowadays. So we don't know the exact terms of the buyout, but the payment was somewhere around six million dollars, so that they could remove Trump's name from the building. Uh, they, by they spent six million dollars specifically so they can erase a dude's name. Yep. Well, and also take down all of the the friggin' propaganda for him all over the place. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? Fucking six billion dollars doesn't cost that much. M million, not billion. Million. Whatever. Yeah. I, if if I had a building that had Trump literally fucking everywhere and I couldn't do anything about it, hell yeah, I'd spend six million dollars. Also, I don't I don't believe it'll take them that long to make that money back. I mean, oh hell no. Hotels make a lot of money. Maybe maybe they didn't have very many uh very many people coming to visit them when they had Trump on it, but now that they've disassociated themselves almost fully with him. I, and I think that's their hope, is especially because of uh, this next story right now. Four. Under Trump, a majority of Canadians dislike the United States for the first time in at least 35 years. So submitted by Zebra Mouse to Our World News. So the... Canada's not real happy with us. It actually... We're not bros? Let, let me amend that. Most of the world isn't real happy with us because of the Except Trump administration. Except if you're a Middle Eastern country that isn't getting bombed. Uh, Israel? I said that isn't getting bombed. Oh, no, they kind mm. Okay, sure. I... It's, We're it's, on rocky it, terms with them right it, now. No, it's Israel. Um, so they have been, they conduct polls as part of, you know, just Canada's normal thing to do is do, con conduct polls about surveys on how their country is, you know, doing and viewing things. And They're like, hey, hey, everything good? Do you want... You want water with your syrup? Yeah, right. Sixty-five percent last year um, f were favorably disposed towards the United States, compared to right now, where it is right around fifty-one percent holding an unfavorable view, compared to the forty-three percent that uh, that like us. So it's dropped about twenty-two percent in the last uh, nine months ish. Shit, I'm pretty self-deprecating as is. This is not helping me. Well, and also they they have polls here of not polls graphs of the world's opinion of the united states 
and all of them are down except for two. Got any guess of who those two are? I do, because I actually read the article, so I know. Oh, damn. Well, cheater. Uh, those cheaters, those cheaters, <laughs> those countries are Israel and Russia. So Russia at between 2015 and 16 had about a 15% favorable view of the U S 15% of the country liked us so bad. Um, and that has been put up to about 44% uh, by uh, as of today. Um, whereas compared to, all right, the hold on. You got to really ask yourself that this question about Russia though, right? Sure. How accurate is that data? I don't know. Compared to possibly messing with it so that, you know, it seems like Russians hate us more. I feel like the world is full of nothing but propaganda from all sides. Pretty and much, I, yeah. I feel like people would really not hate each other as much if all of that propaganda was gone. But that's the problem. Sure. Sure. Because we are very, very tribe-oriented, and sometimes tribes get to be the size of nations. Well, in that case, um, back to these numbers real quick. Mm -hmm. um, Israel has went from 82 to about 84%. Everyone else has dropped South Korea going from about 85 to 80, with currently being the ones that have the, still the highest amount of favor towards us. Right below them is Japan going from 72 to about 68%. UK going from about 63 to about 60%. France going from about 63 to 58. Um, then you have Germany going from about 57 to about 48. And Mexico going from about 67 down to about 37 that's insane. Um, in terms of people that have a higher like to dislike percentage, so people that have 51% favorable opinion or more, um, back uh, a year ago, it was 64% of the world had a favorable opinion of the United States, um, based, which now we are currently sitting at 22%. Well, you know, like what, four more years? Uh, Andrew asked the question of how accurate is our data. This is data that's accumulated from other countries' data. So, I mean, this data is based on the data that is collected by other countries' polls and, and surveys and censuses. So, I mean, our data... I, I, think is... he's, I think he's referring to how many people actually like Trump in America right now. Oh, I have no idea. I, I mean, honestly feel like our data is accurate and he has a more... Uh, he has a... Uh, fuck, what is it? A, oh. de a deficit of people liking him? Yeah, yeah, that'd be, I mean, his last approval rating was like 39% compared to like a 56% disapprove. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, on our side, a lot of people don't like him as well. Right. Three. No religion is now Australia's number one religion. It, it makes sense if you don't think about it. It was submitted by Torless to Our World News. Ugh. Ugh. So, Ugh. Australia does um, a census... Apparently, what? Australia does off, uh, atheism pretty well. What? They do it, like, every, like, two years or something like that. They have a census quite often. Either way, um, in their most recent census, one for 2016, um, on terms of religion, the religions ranked no religion at 30.1%, with Catholic at 226 right behind it, Angelican at 13.3%, and then after that, it drops down to 3, 2, and 1% for a long laundry list of other religions. But Australia, in terms of its census, is is one third and predominantly uh, not religious. That's really interesting. No, it's not atheism, Andrew, in the chat room, um, because it, like some of it is, but there is like there's three parts of so not. So it could be like agnosticism or, or, or secularism. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, it's a mixture of that, as well as some other things. Basically, it's you know, or right. people that just don't claim one. I mean, this could be people that are Christian, but just didn't say that they were Christian. They marked no religion. So there's a lot of things that it could be. Interesting fun fact. Buddhism is technically an atheistic religion. Yeah. Because you don't worship a deity in Buddhism. Sure. It's more of a spiritualist thing. You don't actually worship Buddha. You follow his teachings. Um, I mean, I guess kind of do worship him, but it's not supposed to be like he's not God. He was a man who has achieved nirvana, and 
You know, he's trying to teach other people to do that too. Oh, I I, I said Angelican. It's ang Anglican. A N G L I C A N. Andrew. Um, Anglicism. And it's a member of the Anglican Church, um, which is a church of Angelical. Engl a church of England. Oh. Uh, tr which is a tr which is a branch of Christianity. There you go. Huh. Interesting. Christianity has a lot of branches. Yes, it does. So. Yay, I guess. I don't know. I don't really care. But, I mean, it's good to see that people are are live in such a state where they are not afraid to be able to say that they don't have a religion. Yeah. Or that they don't believe. Because that wasn't always the case. You would be flogged. And I can't click on... There must be a problem with... Excellent, <laughs> Andrew. We are nihilist Lebowski. It, it it asked me for an update when I opened it, but I didn't want to update it right before the show. But that seems to have been uh, something that it needs because I I can't get Exploit to do anything right now. Uh, the Church of the Spaghetti Monster is also a religion, uh, Sarah. Um, even though that was made mostly as a, a parody. Um. um. It is still a recognized religion, and I will recognize the Church of S the Spaghetti Monster way more than the Church of Scientology. Hmm. That is a glorified cult. Two. Should not exist. Colorado mom angry at United after infant overheats while airplane sits on the tarmac at DIA. This was submitted by Forgotten 204, 0204 to our news. DIA is the Denver International Airport. So they were trying to take off, but they are because of complications with taking off as then bad weather. They were on the tarmac for over two hours. Hmm. And okay. And yeah, no, if you're inside of a giant fucking metal tube while, where was it? Where was it? Colorado? Okay, Denver. They're, they're... It was 90 degrees on that day. Oh, okay, so yeah, you're inside of a giant fucking metal tube roasting alive. It's like sticking uh, a tube of of croissants in in an oven and expecting it not to fucking pop. Well, and the thing is, is that airplanes don't actually normally have air conditioning because they don't. They intend to take off fairly quickly, and then when you're you know thirty five thousand feet in the air, the temperature is a lot lower than it is on the ground. Oh yeah, it is. So, um, also, it, those windows don't open. Either way, um, this 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 toddler, and I, by toddler I mean more along the lines of like infant, was starting to get overheated because the inside. So like what? Was, two, three? Um, no, this is like a, a baby. Um, the baby, like the age. Toddlers are three and over. Infants are like one and two. So it'd be more along the lines of infant then. Okay. Uh, uh four months old. There we go. Okay, so slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's more of a, a baby than... I guess it counts as an infant. It's like birth to one or two is infant. Sure. And then after that is is um, is toddler. And then I think it's five after is child. I have no idea. Either way, uh, four-month-old was starting to get overheated. They didn't look like they were going to be taking off anytime soon. The woman requested to be let off the plane. She was told, you know, you can't anymore. The doors have been locked. We're waiting to take off. Um, <laughs> <she's>... <laughs> Andrew, it was a Broncos fan with a fistful of pennies into the engine. No. Um, at, at which point she then, you know, demanded to be let off the plane and called the hospital because her child was overheating. They did finally taxi back over to a gate. She was let off the plane. Her child was administered into the hospital. Um, and basically she is now calling on United Airlines to have some sort of contingency plan for this because that was ridiculous. And I w would hope that she's also asking them to pay for her medical bills. I don't know, but it took it took over 30 minutes for her to be let off the plane even after calling for an ambulance. That baby could have died. And that's the that's the concern. And here's the thing. Here's the thing that irritates me. United let out released a very sad PR apology that I'm not even going to bother reading. And I doubt anything will change in terms of procedure regarding this. United needs to fucking go bankrupt by now. Now, I, as much as I'm glad it didn't happen, I am very curious what would have been the response if the child had died. Uh, a giant lawsuit and hopefully the bankruptcy of United? Well, not just, not just United. I mean in general. Because 
it's regulations. There would be a huge air air regulation shift. And that's the change. thing, though, is that it makes me sad that nothing is going to happen when a child almost died. But because they didn't, nothing will happen. But if they would have perished, then they would have so many people calling on them to fix that issue. The only time issues get fixed in large bits like this is if someone gets either dead or incredibly maimed. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I don't like mm -hmm. them. It's the reason that the world irks me from time to time. Yeah. yeah. One. Patients are ditching opioids and instead using cannabis to treat pain, anxiety, and depression, mostly in states where pot is legal. This was submitted by Exer to Our Science. Um, so, basically what it is, is that... Hang on one second. So, they have been conducting a study, and the study shows that Right now, of the people that use cannabis in the places that it's legal, 46% of cannabis users are using cannabis to replace some other form of medication. And of that 46%, 33% of them are using it to replace pain killers, opioids, etc. Um, so basically, it's that they're just using cannabis instead of prescription medicine. Did you, did you know that, that during the 1800s, cannabis products became a popular medicinal substance? Cannabis products were a popular medicinal substance for hundreds of years, all the way up until the early 1900s, when there was a huge push to get them uh, friggin' banned. You want to know why? Why there was a huge push, or what? Uh, why, why, yeah, that, that there was a huge push for them to get banned. Because they were good, but in... Be because of the Mexican Revolution. Yeah, it was, it was purely a reason to make us not like Mexico, right? Yeah, it was, it was one of the huge reasons, because they... They had um, their own uses for cannabis, and they referred to it as marijuana. Um, and shit, people were unfamiliar with that term, and they smoked it recreationally instead of for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. And because people didn't like them immigrating so much, because apparently everyone has a fucking problem with immigration, even though you're everyone's a fucking immigrant, yeah. except for Native Americans. Anyways, um, because of this, they were like, well, the southern states started running newspapers calling it um, uh, fucking a menace because um, because of the immigrants, because of all of the immigration. And so marijuana became illegal. Um, fuck, I'm going to look it up. Early oh, 1900s. You don't need the exact date. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it became illegal because of it. And then it continued to be illegal after people found out that not only is it good for um, for medicinal purposes it's also like it's also one of the most durable uh clothings like if you if you make hemp um like hemp rope and everything it is one of the most durable uh, materials and on top of that you can farm or, um the the hemp seeds from uh, the seeds from hemp plants um are used in a lot of bird seeds um as well as just feed for uh, animals in general and birds will specifically pick out hemp seeds before any other seed because it leaves their coat really shiny cool um it, it, and it was used in, um, you can also uh, turn the, the leftover materials uh, of the plant after you used it into biofuel. But heaven forbid, right? Right. The, like, I'm Mr. I, 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 Look at me! Sorry. It, it's alright, I'm just, I'm just gonna say this. Hemp and marijuana is probably the most useful plant on the earth. And it's illegal in most countries around the world. Yay! Hey, Nathan, what'd you care about in the last 24 hours? Well, I cared about a lot, and apparently we've already fucking talked about them. Cool. So, um, my thing is that classic Pokemon episodes are now available in HD. So and you can find them on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Here's the question, okay? I have a question on classic Pokemon, you know. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy old Pokemon, right? Do you and, and recently, a another very old anime, which I, I do consider Pokemon to be an anime. Um, oh, it is. Was Sailor Moon recently got re-released in Sailor Moon Crystal, in which it's the exact same story and everything, just brand new animation. It looks great. Right. Do you think we'll ever get that with Pokemon? All right. So we we kind of are. Are you talking about Pokemon Generations? No. Okay. Uh, one of the newest Pokemon movies uh, for the anniversary mm -hmm. uh, is the first, like, couple episodes of Pokemon. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's called Pokemon the Movie 20, I Choose You. Cool. 
and it's a remake slash retelling of the Indigo League saga, released to commemorate the anime's 20th anniversary. Uh, derp. Don't look up Pokemon the Movie 2000. It'll be released in Japan on July 15th, 2017. And it's dated to premiere at Japan Expo in France on July 6th. Neat. All right, cool. So, like, what, next week? Uh, yeah, actually. That's fucking exciting. Nathan, <laughs> yeah. I wonder who they're going to get for, um... All right, so there's going to be new characters, apparently. Um, in in the in it, they're going to talk... They're, they're going to explore more about uh, the Ho-Oh thing in the beginning. Cool. Which was really interesting when you first... When, when you really think about it, because the first shot you see of most Pokemon... Uh, in the in the intro, is Ho Oh, and I mean you can't you can't catch it. No one knew what the fucking Pokemon. Actually, I think they mentioned it once, but no one really knew what that Pokemon was. You couldn't ca- catch it, and it was it was released in Generation Two. You had to wait years in order to even think about catching it. Sure. And then and then they release Lugia with it and make fucking Ho Oh pretty much null and void because Lugia is a hundred thousand times better and cooler. It's so fucking unfortunate because I love Ho Oh. It is a physical fire flying type. It's like ah! better talent flame. Sure. Uh, the thing that I cared about in the last 24 hours is I have no earthly idea. Um, you cared about that it's customer appreciation day at Great Alaska Pizza Company. You get $5 medium pizzas there. That's, uh, I guess I did care about that. I. If I would have known about that, I might have wouldn't grab one. But I'm not it's going like, to. It's like it's my favorite time of the month because I really, really miss eating Great Alaska Pizza Company almost daily. Sure, it was like one of the best parts of that relationship that I had was daily pizza. Well, at least you have pizza today. I had pizza last night, but it was from Little Caesars. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Unfortunately, today was a pretty crazy fiasco of stuff. So uh, I don't know what I cared about. But I know what I cared about. I cared about uh, this show approaching an hour so that we can get the hell out of here. Everybody, uh, if you'd please support the show, patreon.com slash daily internet. Otherwise, oh, um, Andrew had another, I'm sorry, Andrew had another important thing about the uh, marijuana. He said it is only illegal due to threatening timber interests uh, 100 years ago. And yes, it, it, it is. It, Partially. It, it is not 100%. Is not only illegal due to threatening timber interests, but it is definitely a leading cause because you can also make paper out of hemp. Um, as well as a lot of other things that, like building materials that y- you would use lumber for. Sure. Anyways, as you were saying, sorry. We'll get there. Uh, follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those are at iRidicast. Follow me at Schwan Michael, and Nathan is at Bimenstein. If you please leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, or you can see tell us what you'd like us to talk about, send us an email to our inbox, which is feedback.iredit at gmail.com, or call and leave us a voicemail, 508-738-2278. And that is your 312th dose of the internet, everybody. I am Michael Schwan. And I'm Nathan Wood. And please remember, everybody. Don't get Have a good day, everyone.